you what's going on y'all it's jay small reviews here back at it again with another video as you guys can see it's been a quieter week for the most part man right um so that really just going to talk about a few topics theoretical topics right kind of coming out and the big one i want to talk about is the top six versus new top six joint um that it looks like is kind of in the works i see url promo in it when the hell is url ever on twitter tweeting out promo and actually getting matchups going obviously super invested in their young talent this year development's been a big part of it something i might want to make a video on i might make a whole video on just the crucible what i like about it what i don't if you guys would like to see something like that i'm down to do a detailed video about it um but I wanted to talk about how I can see the matchups playing out, taking each six of them and building the card the way I see it best fit and how it's kind of lining up. And also just a little bit of talk real quick uh, to start on what's going on with this URL budget talk, right? And for the most part, I, I stay away from kind of this topic stuff. If I do touch on it for a couple minutes, might start doing that a little bit, just opening it up with a couple of my little thoughts on these, these large topics that you're going to see every big blogger is going to do a video on because it right it's the algorithm for the day this is the topic that people are going to talk about right now people are talking about url possibly withholding money now it does come from a court document right i think that their motion was denied to conceal um their finances and it really at the end of that it's not none of us are lawyers are really 100 percent in that courtroom we got people saying that norms is going to get all the money one day we have people saying that norms is, is going to hell and he's done for the the next week so we'll see how it actually plays out when it plays out you know what i mean but in terms of this talk about budget and things of that nature uh mostly led by a verb you know saying verb doing his spaces as he should as a battler a personality he's found a, a, a niche where he can get about the 500 listeners has the presence on youtube too because he streams it there it's smart for a verb to do what he He's doing he's going very anti-url kind of waving the rb flag right which is the reverse of when he fucked over rb to go and get a lux battle on url but that's playing all he can do is control his situation right so verb is going to make sure that verb has the best situation and maybe his people's other battlers he's cool with which is how you're supposed to do it you know what i'm saying but for those that are over the top listening saying yeah it's robbery the budget's this and that I, I beg to ask, you know, just a couple questions. Does anybody, can anybody name what the budget for a big card is? The expenses, what goes into it? Can anybody name the asking prices, the actual evolution of their, their favorite battler's prices, verbs prices? Nobody really knows. So when I see like constants, one thing with the battlers, they have a shtick, they have a, they have a role to play, a brand, right? angles things to do for their own uh, success. But when I see fans just blatantly with no information, don't know really anything about the behind the scenes, don't know the price point, don't really know the asking prices, knowing nothing, talking about in depth the budgets and the corruption. I just ask anyone to be a little more informed before they jump out the window. This is battle rap, that's not gonna happen. Uh, but I just think it's a funny topic to see people talk budgets that don't know anything about budgets. Who knows if URL's right? Who knows if URL's wrong? But I just find it's like the word of Averb and all of a sudden, oh, he's, he's exposed it, no. No, it's not. It's not how it's going down. Um, but just my little two cents on that because I see ridiculousness on it. Um, and you just got to crack a couple jokes. But main point of this is still the top six versus top six. I think the card lines up well. I have my thoughts on why it's a good idea. And let's just get right into it. Many fans have asked developmentally, you know what I'm saying, for interclass matchups. It's a big thing that we've asked for. While this isn't like pure interclass, if this goes down between, you know, the Saflair, Klutz, and Foots class, and now this newer class that people haven't seen yet, final exams hasn't dropped for the love of God. Drop the final exams battles. Um, but with that being said, Capo, Eunice, Dice. So it's these two sets of six uh, arguing and we talk about inner class and while it's like i said it's not exactly 100 percent inner class it's new guys versus new guys i think it makes sense you're gonna get a lot of hunger you're already getting the promo there and this is a big thing um one guys were facing each other promo and making wars older times guys were promoing each other uh wanted wars i think a card right here would just do good it's actually kind of funny because i know that the mindset for when you see how url is booked is we're going to do a vet versus the new guy so the new guy can keep taking a little bit of that fan base from the vets, but there's not that get to know them like the personality part in the middle. They're just right in the vets. Capo's debut is versus T-Top in a three-round battle. You know what I mean? So Flair Soul, who won it, and both these guys, I heard Capo might have won his battle, and I know it's Flair Soul beat Chess, right? And these are good wins, but it happens so early in the career. I just don't think everybody gets the chance to really go in there and root for him. You know what I'm saying? It comes off as shocking, but it comes off as almost random in a sense. When you build cards like this, I like this a lot. You're going to see plenty of different new styles that are hungry at that, going against each other, motivated 
motivation makes battles when both sides are as motivated as possible. Oh, this is a guy that's kind of in my class. He's in the way of possible plates I can get. They're really going to want to kill each other as opposed to a vet who already is just going to be more skilled because he's more experienced, but he's either taking a half serious, 80% serious versus a rookie giving it his all. If the rookie gives his all and, and does his best and still loses, it's a pretty cool look. If the rookie wins... You know what I'm saying? People are just going to go and say the vets didn't try. It's kind of ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not fair, but you're kind of booking them in a position for it to not be fair. Um, as opposed to this, I expect if a card, this card goes down, you get plenty of breakout performances. Um, but I wanted to give my matchups for it. Those are kind of my reasons I think are good. And the first one is Mozzie versus Ease. I think effectively Mozzie's probably going to be bottom of um, his class because he choked and pretty much died during his final exam from what we've heard and as for ease i think that his stock is probably the lowest in the six if i'm correct ease might have said that himself that he's the lowest stock and it really comes down mostly to opportunities i thought he really clipped up hanzo good at civil war i thought it was a pretty good hanzo but ease had a kind of a breakout performance and from there you get the prep battle yeah yeah you know what I'm saying? He won, but it was whatever. I thought it was a weird even kind of opportunity to give him bottom of the outside two card after having a good inner class performance. And then he goes in his second, the 3v3, which did not go his way whatsoever, right? His round in the 3v3 was really, really bad versus ours, um, respectfully. So you get this matchup, the South versus the South, right? Both of them have extreme, like, Southern sound. You know what I mean? Uh, Louisiana for Mozzie, if I'm correct. And then as for... Um, as for Ease, I believe he's Florida. You know what I'm saying? Deep, deep Florida. So I just think it's a good Southern matchup, and it kind of makes sense for where they are compared to the rest of their class. Next matchup I'd like is Bandit Montana versus Hansel. Um, Hansel has kind of become the spokesperson for his top six, so maybe some people would argue, and especially since he that does have a judge win on Eunice, that he should be battling up. It's just the way that I'll see it mapped out when you see the other matchups I have style-wise. But Bandit is solid. We all know Bandit's basically a vet in the in the spot of a rookie right now. We know that when he got a, he's been around for a minute, battled a lot of vets, gates of the garden, things of that nature. So I think that he does have the season to go up against Hansel, both of them for the most part, got some substance, but punch, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion, like, that's just the basis of their style, I don't want to say default, but they don't have, do anything too crazy outside of the box, just one of those good bar for bar fest, and I think they can match each other in aggression bars, they're similar in a lot of ways, in my opinion, and so those are your first two matchups there, right, Mozzie E's, Bandit Hansel, and then from there, we get into the top four uh, matchups here that I think really make sense, and where this card starts to really benefit both classes, I think the first few matchups do as well, I think the concept does, everyone loves a good theme card but then we get into a battle like Eunice versus Klutz um this is a battle that I think would be extremely fire clearly it's the pen of the pen it's the top pens from each class going at it um true pen styles at that kind of pride themselves on the intricacy and being way more complex way more detailed than their counterparts doesn't mean that they're exactly just straight better battlers by any means but just in terms of that particular category they are they are pens to the core and as for Eunice probably the most known from his class very big on Twitter. We remember his come up through the spaces. At least mo a lot of us do. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, not everyone was there to see the spaces battles, but that is a good amount of what this class is made out of. Dice, uh, Eunice, even Wusa, although Wusa was doing live battles around the same time. They did come up through that era, uh, spaces, and even then, Eunice has made a good transition live. We all know the Hansel battle just came out of the riot. Very, very good battle. His Chef Trez battle never saw the light of day, which I think is just unfortunate. Also has a bunch of OSBL work. Um, so, you know, Eunice has got some experience out here. His brand's up there a little bit. And as for Klutz, I'm extremely impressed with Klutz. Um, even for someone, as a, just a base pen style, usually you don't see it as the top of a class, because you know, they want the showmanship, performance. Um, I wouldn't say personality because he has personality too, but maybe just a different type of, you know, star, what's more considered a star in battle rap um, traditionally. But his success is kind of undeniable. I think his JC performance had him winning clear, right? Versus Chilla. I always I had Chilla winning that. I see a lot of people got Klutz. I personally always had Chilla though. And then he just really did Cortez nasty. Now, are they the craziest wins? No, but it's a good consistent record versus Vets. I'm not watching any of these performances and thinking, damn, Klutz really dropped the ball here. Klutz really fucked up here. Even if I had him losing to Chilla, I thought he did good. I just thought he lost that battle. Um and then you go against Eunice. Style-wise, it makes sense. Motivation-wise, you have Klutz, who now gets to kind of play the A-side, which he hasn't done yet in a battle. I think it will be kind of cool 
develop, developing him a little bit. Um, and on the flip side, like I said, for Eunice, uh, Hurdy just had a great battle with Miss Hustle, even with Hansel, he had a great battle. Now, if he has a ba great battle with Hustle, Hansel, Klutz, that's what people like to start seeing building up. Yeah, you got the vet in there, which she promised him a look during Midnight Madness. He won the Midnight Madness tournament um, as well. So that the story of that makes sense, but then the rest of these, you're building up against the class that's ahead of him, and he's having good footage. People will start to root for him, and it just shows in the way that Eunice already kind of gets a lot of praise. I think it's it's just a very smart battle to book if you're going to book this card. From there, similar in terms of style matchup, Wusa versus Saflair. I think that could be power punchers. They both have a great real talk bag. They both have a great power puncher bag. Styles make sense. At one point, I thought Saflair was kind of easily the best of his class. Recent loss to Danny and then sitting kind of is going to hurt the optics of that. Um, but I, I still think he's immensely talented. Probably still has the highest ceiling of anyone in the class, in my opinion. While Wusa, people haven't gotten to see him. Shit, I haven't gotten to see Fonz versus Wusa yet. But I heard that he really held in there as a power puncher. I've heard people ask for Saflair and Fonz. I think that might be another jump kind of in the wrong direction, especially with Fonz just becoming top tier, in my opinion. He's a little bit of bigger fish to fry, different trajectories on. So if you want both of them to battle Fonz, have them battle each other. Great battle. I, I think that could possibly be the best battle of any of these on the card that I've mentioned. So going into the final two battles of the card, and you'll see style-wise, the second to last battle follows the format of the rest where it's kind of that mirror match uh, situation with dice and foots. Now we talked about Wu San Saflair being the power puncher matchup. I think this is another uh, puncher matchup, but I think it's more rapid fire, right? Saflair and uh, Wu Sa build up, bomb build up, bomb. Big reason they put Wu Sa against Fonz. Uh, as we talked about, with dice and foots, you're going to get more. You're going to get a ton of haymakers, but it's back-to-back. -back. It's back-to-back -back punching for the most part. Uh, Foots coming off what we what we heard is a fantastic performance versus Nitty. I know that's that's got a bunch of controversy around it with the time limits. Definitely, once again, mistake on the league's part with how that's been handled. Um, and it sucks that before we even get to see the great performance, we're already going to have all these different lens and context that people are already kind of putting on it. But it doesn't change the fact that I heard he did great. All I see Foots do for the most part, winner losses, do great. Seems like a real student of the game, trying to learn that. That's all you can ask for from these newer talents. No, a lot of legends, the Rocks, the Cows, a lot of people weren't pure winners coming up. It's a little 50-50 at first, but it's about getting better. We can have someone that starts out great, but if they start out great and don't get better, as opposed to someone who starts out good and you see constantly uh, every battle, there's just more comfortability. There's there's things that they're trying out better. I think Foots has that potential to be a star because I think he's willing to work to be one. And as for Dice, I have always, I've been very excited about Dice in this class. Um, Pure Puncher just says bars for the most part where I'm like, how do you think of that? You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, oh, that was creative as hell. Just so creative with the wordplay. I think Foots in it is very similar in that vein. I just think this is very similar. Roos and Saflair, the Power Punchers, Eunice and Klutz, the Pens, Bandit and Hansel. You know, somewhat still punchers at that. Mozzie and Ease, you get the straight southern sound. They, they really sound a lot alike, uh, even though they are from two different uh, parts of southern regions. And then Dice versus Foots, the rapid puncher. So for the most part, this card lines up and makes sense stylistically. The theme of it makes sense. This is the opportunity to kind of build these talents, not just throw them against top tiers. This is the ones that I'm telling you people will be more locked in, in and interested to learn the talents because we know whoever wins some of these battles uh, is going to be the, the top pickums of the class, has the future, and if you lose, it's not all said and done, but, you know, you got to thin the herd a little bit, and cards like this allow you to pick who's really going to be the greats, and then haven't even talked about the top battle, which is kind of the one that's been promo the most, tweeted out by URL, their skits, their uh, talk the most shit to each other, and that is Capo versus Authentic. Now, I'm not, like, the craziest over it on paper. Um, just because unlike the other ones, it doesn't have the immediate, oh, this makes sense for this reason. But with that being said, they've promoted to the point it makes sense. Um, both two of the more vocal ones, uh, Capo, one of the more known, in my opinion, and higher ceiling guys from the from the newer class, um, the newest, newest top six, uh, like what he does. Great real talk bag, similar to Authentic. Authentic, someone who I kind of wrote off at first, thought after the chef battle, he might not get it again. Didn't hear much noise from him. Jack Boy battle was impressive. The two on two and three v three cents, he's done just good enough where I can't really say there's been a, a drop in stock or anything like that, um, but hasn't really had a wow moment like that since the Jack Boy battle. So right here, you get an opportunity for just a good battle. It's not something that people, I think, are expecting at first. I, don't, I think when you look at authentic and capital on paper it doesn't jump out like the others for that style reason but 
as we talked about at the beginning, motivation is going to be new class versus new class. I know Capo's kind of been downplaying him, but I think with the way they've talked, it's already a battle that makes sense. I think they're both good enough to make it a great battle. And if it's going to be the centerpiece of this card, funny enough, it's not a battle I would have up there for Battle of the Night, but... I think it just does make sense that they're going to talk to each other this greasy, and I think overall puts a great bow on a, on a really good concept for URL. That is uh, my full thoughts here for a possible top six class. Just my wish list on it, but when I see something like that that's getting so promoted, I love booking, guys. This is what I like to talk about. I like to talk about possible matchups over anything else in battle rap. So when I see a concept like this, especially with the demand for theme cards, we love theme cards, man. I feel like URL has a really hard time pulling off themed cards. You do have stuff like Kings versus Queens, right? That has become a staple, but I'll never, how many team versus team cards, you know what I'm saying, have we asked for? We have gotten rookies versus vets in a few different ways, but I remember for years when we asked for it and it was just gone for a minute. There's all different types of themes that you can you can mess around with that people like, you know what I'm saying? We're always gonna like battles for the sake of liking battles, the matchups, but when you have that extra thing that kind of sells itself for it, people are gonna buy into it no matter what. It's just smart marketing for the battles. And on top of that, the style-wise does make sense here. Uh, it's versatility within the classes. Unis versus Klutz, the Penheads are going to love that one. You know what I mean? When it comes to power punchers, whether you like just big-time power punching or rapid punching, you got Dyson Foots and we got Wusan to Flair to kind of fulfill that like bar-heavy stuff. Also, that it's not like that's all they got. These guys, heavy on the performance, heavy on the aggression. That's why they've gotten this far as it is. Real talk for the authentic versus capo battle. I'm not going to call it a grudge match, but a little bit more of a personable. We've been going back and forth more so than these other guys have been going back and forth type of battle. Mozzie versus Ease for the Southern Sound. Even Bandit versus Hanzo gives you another just straight punch fest. Some all-around battlers. It just makes sense. I hope if it's not booked it late this year because I do want to see a couple of the older top six class on volume. I think Klutz is kind of maybe Klutz and Foots the battle I'm hoping for. They've kind of earned that look to get in there again. Um, but I know that the new class, I think the top two of the new class might face off on the volume as well. So if they're a little too busy towards the end of the year, I hope top of 2024, if you're not going to do UM, which is another great concept to do, this is a fantastic one that we're bought into. But it's been Jay Small Reviews again here, y'all. Like I said, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of these matchups and if top six versus top six is something you're interested in. I'm going to catch you on the next one, man. Peace.